Oh, I hope it's okay. I don't know how to use a real camera. Okay, I guess it's time for that stats video that follows every color. I don't really know how to do this, so I'm just gonna be going through each section of my application. All right, so I'll just be going through my comment app. If you don't know what that is, that's just like a way for you to like submit your college application to a bunch of colleges so you don't have to re-enter your information every single time you apply to a different college. I'm just gonna be running through like a quick background of like me and my application. Uh, I'm gonna go through the numbers, which is like stats, GPA, SAT, ACT, that kind of stuff. I'm gonna go through the schedule, uh, any awards, extracurriculars, essays, and then at the end I'm gonna do like a little bit of speculation on how I think I'm Done. So yeah, I guess if you know me personally or go to my school, this is what I've been up to. None of this should be like seen as like a flex or anything. My application is like far from perfect. All right, so I'm a pretty standard, boring applicant, um, Asian male, U.S. citizen. Uh, my parents really cared about my education, so uh, I'm lucky to go to like a small private school uh, with a class of 133. Uh, and I applied early decision to Cornell University. Uh, and I went in as undecided for uh, the School of Arts and Sciences. Uh, though I'm probably gonna major in a while. Number. So people are usually most curious about this part, so uh, let's start with GPA. So I had a 3.99 unweighted GPA, but my school actually only reports like the weighted GPA. Uh, not, not everybody's like school system and GPA system is gonna be the same. And some of my other friends at school, like their school, they don't have to worry about like A minus. Ours is supposedly higher even though you can go above because uh, like some honors or AP classes will give like a plus one to their GPA like for that class. Uh, at my school, I had a 4.70 unweighted uh, by the end of junior year, which is what Cornell assessed my GPA on uh, because the due date for early decision was not until November 1st and the first semester ended after. I honestly don't know what my current GPA is and like I don't really my school also doesn't like officially rank their students to like prevent uh, super competitiveness. Is, is that a word, super competitiveness? But if you ask the counselors, they will give you like an unofficial ranking. Uh, so I was curious and I asked for mine. So I'm ranked uh, number three out of 133, but like the college just didn't see that. So I think this is like almost as or just as important as um, your grades. Uh, because I think it's important uh, to show colleges that you can handle hard classes. I made little like color-coded graphics for like my courses, grades, GPA per year. Uh, and I'll put it up here while I like talk about like my, my schedule. So first off, like NC means like no count. So like that wasn't factored in your GPA, which is good because you, know, you don't want like a 4.0 sinking your GPA. Anything in red is like a required 4.0 class, which I'm guessing is why our GPA scale is out of 4, because like you can't get a perfect 5.0 Anything in yellow is a weighted class that'll give you a plus one bump to your GPA. And as you can tell, sophomore year is uh, where I really, really try to take as many weighted classes as I could. Uh, and I got that bump in GPA. Unfortunately though, my grades did slip a little bit with um, like a couple A minuses in the first semester, but like I brought it back up. Uh, junior year is where you gotta like kick it up a couple notches. I mean, not much to say except for that it was rough. And then, I mean, on top of this was like standardized testing and extracurriculars and stuff like that, but we'll, we'll get there later. Oh, the reason why um, English is still red junior year is because I actually didn't get like a recommendation to go to like the weighted English class because like my writing is so horrible. <laughs> I actually got made fun of by my friends that like I was taking like advanced STEM classes, but like I was still in like the normal English class. I mean, whatever, it worked out. This is my current schedule. Um, it's not very fun. Uh, since I applied ED, uh, Cornell didn't see the first semester grades. I mean, they will, but once I kind of got in, you can tell I started to like relax. And uh, looking at my transcript, I guess my cumulative GPA actually got a small bump of 0 0.04. Cool. Oh, and uh, the summer of my junior year, I went to Cornell for three weeks uh, and I took a uh, sports psychology class, uh, which was really fun. Uh, I got an A plus in that class, so that's good. All right, let's start with APs. So these are all the APs that I took over the course of like my four years, uh, sorted by like name, score, and like the year I took them. Anything you see in green is like a self-study. Uh, and if you're wondering about like the double chemistry, uh, I want to see if I can get like some college credit towards like my bio major. Uh, but you know, and since and since Cornell only takes five, you know, I, we'll we'll see. We'll see. All right, ACT. So I took the ACT twice. Uh, the first time was like a 34. I was like one point off from a 35. 
Uh, so like I just like studied for like one subject. I think it was English. Uh, and then like I didn't care about like the second time I took it, but like somehow it averaged to a 35 and that's why the reading is so low. But like uh, I, I just, I still use the super score anyways. I'm, I mean, I'm okay with the score. I have more friends that got 36s than 35s, but I mean, I think they're like the same once you get up there. I took the PSAT in 11th grade. Um, it's also called the NMSQT, I believe. Um, and I got a 1460, which qualifies for national merit commended student. I did not take the SAT. Oh, SAT submission test. Okay, so like, I don't have any of them because like they're, they got discontinued like at the end of 2020, but like the college board like kind of screwed me over. Okay, so I like signed up over the summer for like the November 2020 test. I was getting straight 800s on practice tests leading up to the test. And then I got, and then suddenly I just got this email that says, oh, we need to postpone it. And it's like, okay, which I mean, it kind of threw me off a little bit, but like, I mean, like I, I had still studied up until they said, we'll reschedule it for like December. And then December comes and then they just like send another out of the blue email saying, oh, like, you know, we discontinued the test, sorry. I remember being so frustrated because like I sunk so much time into that. Whatever, rant over. Okay, so for the Common you can list up to five awards, which is good because I only have five, and they have to be academic. So uh, I'm gonna just run through these really quickly. So first was like National Merit Commended Student. Second was like AP Scholar with Distinction. Third was, uh, I think, okay, it looks some haiku contest that was like a finalist for. Fourth was like a basic AP Scholar. Uh, and the fifth was a CIF, like Sport Academic Award type. Uh, I actually did have two non-academic awards, uh, but like, since there's no place in the Common App to put them, I just put them in like the additional information section. I'm gonna run through these kind of quickly because I don't want the video to be too long and a lot of these are like pretty similar anyway. Uh, but on the Common App, you can list up to 10. And the ones that I chose were either the ones that like I spent the most time in or like um, the ones that I spent the most consecutive years doing. Okay, so the first one was like a podcast I created where like I interviewed students, teachers, and even like a New York Times bestselling author about like anything from like high school life to stress culture. Uh, two, three, and four were all sports stuff. So varsity swim, varsity water polo, and club swim. I I'd swam for like seven years and like I still suck, but whatever, it's fine. Okay, number five, as part of my school's multicultural education student leadership group, six and seven uh, were volunteering activities. So the first one was at a hospital, which took up a lot of my weekend. Uh, and the second one was uh, teaching kids how to code. Uh, number eight, I was a student ambassador, which is another student leadership kind of type of thing. And then number nine and ten were like also volunteering clubs that I joined. So the first was acing autism, where like I taught ch autistic children like the basics of tennis. And the uh, last activity was STEAM for all, uh, where I helped facilitate math and like science competitions. Essays. All right. So obviously I won't be reading out like my essays because that would take too long. So I'm just going to speak more generally on them. So I had to write two essays for Cornell. So the first one was a personal statement that is like um, for the Common App that you send to like every school. And then the second one was a Cornell supplement, which is specific to Cornell. Uh, and I think it's specific to the College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, but it was basically just like why arts and sciences, why Cornell. Okay. So the personal statement, my essay was like pretty standard. I mean, my writing is like horrible. I had like a knee injury freshman year and I just wrote about like uh, how it affected me and like overcoming it, which actually led to like one of my non-academic um, But, uh, and as cliche as it sounds, like how it changed my life. Okay, so for the Cornell supplement, that's actually where like going to Cornell for three weeks actually really helped me because I was able to like authentically articulate like what I was like thinking and feeling, talking to actual professors at the real buildings, um, taking their real classes. But I also did like a lot of research on their website, uh, specifically like the arts and sciences websites uh, about like you know, majors, professors, and classes and all that stuff. Okay, so that wraps up like all the major parts of the application. Now I'm just going to be kind of speculating like how I think I may have gotten. I mean, none of, not, obviously I'm not a college admissions officer. I don't have my admissions file, so I don't know for sure. But you know, this is all just guessing. Okay, personally, I think it was good that I had like a decent foundation and I had, I had like something to show for like all aspects of the college application. So like, you know, it wasn't bad, but I think um, like the strongest part of my application was my academics, despite not being a straight A student. Uh, well, okay, I guess that depends on how you define straight A student, whether it's like the umbrella term for like A and A minus or like just A. My standardized test scores were like in the upper 75th percentile of like Cornell students. So that was, I think, a little bonus. Uh, I also think that getting like an A plus in that Cornell class and combined with like my kind of rigorous course selection helped tell Cornell that like I can handle or should be able to handle their rigorous classes. 
and finally, I would be remiss if I did not mention legacy. Um, I know uh, that at the very minimum, it does help. I don't know how much it does help because I know people who are like double or like even triple legacy that didn't get in. But um, I do want to acknowledge that it probably helped my application in some way. Uh, that's all for me. I uh, hope you didn't fall asleep or anything. Um, try to keep it short and concise. Uh, if you have any like suggestions for video ideas, I will gladly take them in the comments. Uh, I try to like respond to most of the comments because uh, I mean I have nothing better to do. So, uh, but I do have a couple ideas that I might want to work on. So uh, maybe I'll see you then. I'm gonna go through my comment app and. Uh... Are you taking a nap now? Yeah.